Diana Duran is New Mexico's 24th Secretary of State. She was elected in 2010 and is running for re-election. Ms. Duran served as Otero County Clerk for two terms and served as their deputy clerk for nearly 30 years. The Diana Duran campaign website lists accomplishments including development of an in-house elections management system and a wide range of initiatives designed to modernize the office, streamline operations, cut costs, and focus on customer service. Secretary of State Diana Duran, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for having me. It's great to be here. So in your opinion, which is a more important duty of the Secretary of State's office? As the Chief uh, State Elections Officer, is it more important to you to encourage people to participate in the process of voting, or is it more important to make sure that the integrity of the process is protected from things like voter fraud? I want to thank you for that question. Um, as, as Secretary of State and having served as county clerk, my entire elections administration year spans about 30 years. And since I became a county clerk in Otero County and then even serving in the Senate when I served for 18 years, and now in my fourth year as Secretary of State, the integrity of the entire electoral process is critically important to me. So I think that what my primary objective has been and continues to be is assuring that every New Mexico every New Mexican understands that we do as much as we can in the Secretary of State's office to assure that your vote counts and counts only once. So I'd have to say my primary objective has been that, to assure integrity in the electoral process. If we know, for example, that in 2010, only 43% of the registered voters who were eligible voted, does that frustrate you that turnout is relatively low? Well, of course that frustrates me, but I've, as I've said for, for years, I think that as the chief elections officer responsible for oversight and working with the county clerks in all 33 counties, I think the best thing that I can do as secretary of state is again, working to assure the integrity of the process because that in itself encourages people to go out and vote. When you have people, and I've traveled this state um, quite a bit, not just recently, but for many years, People who believe that their vote is not going to count, people who will actually say, well, I'm not going to go vote because my vote won't count, then there's something wrong there. And I think that the reason they get that impression is because for too many years we have had in New Mexico, we have not had a Secretary of State who has been willing to look into all allegations of voter irregularity, voter fraud, or just issues that that do nothing to improve the process or encourage voters to have, to have confidence in the system. About voter fraud, how many cases of voter fraud have been proven in New Mexico since you've been Secretary of State? Well, I could not tell you the, the number that have been proven because as you know, that's very difficult to, to come up with a number or even to find uh, someone who will go after someone for voter fraud if the, for that matter. As you probably are aware, in 2011 when I came in as Secretary of State, one of the first things that I became aware of was that the Secretary of State for many years had been receiving complaints and concern, letters of concern from New Mexicans around the state alleging voter fraud in different areas of the state, but previous secretaries had not chosen to even look into them. So when I came into office in 2011, one of the first areas that I ended up re looking into was Sunland Park. I went to Sunland Park with my deputy and my director of elections and spent a couple of weeks there, and we found that there were actually instances of voter fraud in Sunland Park. I turned over those cases, I think there were over 23, at least 23 or more names that we turned over to the district attorney in Doniana County. Six of those people were convicted and many of those are still ongoing. So it's difficult to give any sort of a number in New Mexico, but as I've always said, one case of voter fraud, anytime one person who should not be voting is voting or comes from Texas and votes in New Mexico, that is one case too many. So we, we take, I take case allegations of voter irregularity and voter fraud very seriously and I believe those, there are others around the state that we've not been able to, to get to. You've been a vocal proponent of a voter ID that yes. voters should show that at the exactly. polls. 
The Brennan Center for Justice estimates that as many as 7% of Americans do not have ready access to voter ID. So if we apply the 7% number to the 1.34 million registered voters in New Mexico, that's almost 100,000 people who could potentially not have access to that ID. Do you find that as worrisome as the six people who were uh, prosecuted for voter fraud? I find I find it worrisome to have either either way. I, anybody who is has a difficult time registering to vote or having access to the polling place is a concern, of course. Just as I said, the one person who commits voter fraud disenfranchising the right of all other eligible New Mexicans. But let me just say this: in other states, many other states where voter photo voter ID has been required, you, they have seen an increase in voter participation, not a decrease. And as as, as a matter of fact, if anybody who is interested, I'd love for them to go to my website, which is very easy, dianaduran.com, and under the issues section there, you can read a lot about what other states have done. And in fact, there was a Supreme Court justice in the state of Indiana who said about the, comp the concerns that people don't have ID and all of the excuses, basically, that are out there for not requiring voter ID, he actually said, all, and this was a, a liberal Supreme Court justice who looked at all of the issues and said, these excuses are just not warranted. There, there's no reason for all of these excuses. And many other states have come up with, and we've seen, we have best practices that we can follow in all these other states, uh, ways that everyone could have an ID, a photo ID that, you know, all of these areas where they say there's the 97-year-old lady that was was transported from the senior I, center. I think the important to, thing the is that the, the possibility is there. There are ways for them to get that ID, but there oh, sure. remain tens of thousands of people who might not have it. But I wanted to ask you, you were the first Republican in 80 years to 82, be... 82, actually. 82 years 82 to be years, elected yes. to this office. And as state senator, you rallied your, co your colleagues as the Senate Republican caucus chair. When your opponent criticizes you for what she, as she says, hyper politicizing the office, what's your response? Well, uh, it's interesting that she would say hyper politicizing. One of the things that I said when I was county clerk and I've continued to say as secretary of state is a county clerk and a secretary of state in as much as possible should be as nonpartisan as you possibly can. I, as I mentioned earlier, have spent 30 years as an elections administrator overseeing numerous elections, working with Democrats and Republicans. I served 18 years in the Senate and still call many of those on both sides of the aisle my friends. And so I've worked with Democrats and Republicans and I actually have people in my office. I have a former Bill Richardson cabinet secretary working in my office who happens to be a Democrat. I don't ask anyone who works with me in my office what their party affiliation is. So when my opponent says that, the only thing I can say to that is, you know, someone, she has to say something, and I guess that's the only thing that she can come up with to say, but let me just say this. It's, it's, it's amazing to me how um, nonpartisan an office can run, and and, and and mine has, and run as well as it does, and with the people that I have, the leadership team I have working in there, they are just an amazing bunch. And so I would just say to that, I don't know why she would say something like that, possibly because so she doesn't have a whole lot to talk about. You but, mentioned earlier that the, uh, and we only have a couple minutes left, okay. but I got two more. Okay. You mentioned earlier that you had evidence that states that required voter ID had seen some increase in turnout. States with same day voter registration also have seen about a 10 or 12% increase in voter turnout. Why do you oppose it? Well, you know, I live, I, I come from a border county. I come from Otero County. And then of course I saw the voter fraud that occurred in Sunland Park. I think with same day registration, we, we're not there as far as the security and the system. With same day registration, you could have someone drive over from El Paso, Texas to Otero County, Alamogordo, where I was served as clerk for many years. That person could register to vote that day, vote that moment, and go right back to Texas and vote in Texas. It's, there, there are no safeguards to keep something like that from that, happening. that your system would not be able to root out something like that? The system we have in New Mexico currently could not root that out. There is no way that we could know in the state of New Mexico that if, if I drove from Texas to Alamogordo registered to vote, 
voted in Otero County, and then drove back to El Paso, where I was already registered and voted there, there is no system that I know of, and there is no system in New Mexico, and I don't know of another system that could, that could track that, would be able to stop that. And remember, once you cast that vote, it's cast. That vote is, vote is cast and in the, in the tabulator. We do have a system with provisional votes where they're reviewed before they're actually processed. Yes, if you were given a provisional ballot, yes. So, just to wrap it up, you've worked uh, in public service for many years yes. as a legislator, a county clerk, as you mentioned, deputy county clerk, right. now secretary of state. What drives you to continue to want to serve in public office. You know, it's been it's an honor. It's an honor to serve as Secretary of State. It was an honor to serve my district in District 40 as a state senator, and it was the same as county clerk. I believe that as as a, an elected official, we should all remember what it means to be a public servant. We should remember that we are there to serve the people of the state of New Mexico. And I have been working for the past four years to do the very best we could to bring the office to where people in New Mexico could be proud of their Secretary of State's office again. And I've done that. So I'd like to continue doing providing the service to New Mexicans that we've provided. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for having me.